Lieutenant Williams, a police officer attached to the juvenile division. I'm on my way to Monroe Junior High School to talk to a group of young people. That looks innocent enough, doesn't it? Lots of young people hitchhike. Seems like a good way to get from one place to another. But sometimes there are dangers involved that never meet the eye. Let's take the case of Jimmy Barnes. Jimmy played baseball all afternoon, and he didn't feel like walking home, so he decided to thumb a ride. He'd done it a hundred times before, and he didn't think anything was unusual when the driver struck up a friendly conversation. In fact, he seemed like a real nice guy. He asked Jimmy if he played baseball in the park often. Jimmy told him they practiced three times a week and played a rival group on Friday afternoon. The stranger was a good listener, too, and it only seemed minutes before they pulled up in front of Jimmy's house. When Jimmy got out, the stranger gave him a friendly pat. Then he told him he'd see him again, as he always drove by the park on his way home. Sure enough, the following day when Jimmy finished playing ball, well, the man was there waiting. stopped at a drive-in and the stranger treated him to a Coke. During their conversation, he told several off-color jokes, but Jimmy had heard others before and, well, it made him feel big to so easily win the confidence of an older person. The following Saturday, they went fishing together. By now, they were using first names. Ralph said it was more friendly. Jimmy hadn't enjoyed himself so much in a long time. Then during lunch, Ralph showed him some pornographic pictures. Jimmy knew he shouldn't be interested, but well, he was curious. What Jimmy didn't know was that Ralph was sick, a sickness that was not visible like smallpox, but no less dangerous and contagious, a sickness of the mind. You see, Ralph was a homosexual, a person who demands an intimate relationship with members of their own sex. But by now, Jimmy felt a fondness for Ralph, and they continued to go places together. Ralph was generous and took Jimmy many interesting places and did many nice things for him. He bought presents and even gave him money. But payments were expected in return. You see, Jimmy hadn't recognized Ralph's approach soon enough. When Ralph first asked Jimmy to go fishing alone, he should have discussed it with his parents or teacher. Finally, Jimmy told his parents, and they reported it to the juvenile authorities. Ralph was arrested, and Jimmy was released on probation in the custody of his parents. But all homosexuals are not passive. Some resort to violence, as in the case of Mike Merrick. In the heat of competition, no one noticed the man who sat and watched. And when the game broke up and the others left, Mike decided to stay and practice a little longer. The stranger joined him. He was friendly and, well, it was better than playing alone. But after a few shots, Mike realized he had already overstayed his time and suggested he better leave. The stranger told him if he'd like to stay longer, he'd be glad to drive him home when they finished. Sounded great to Mike. Chance to play longer and get a ride home too.
When they finished, the stranger told him he'd make a fine player someday if he got lots of practice. The companionship, the praise, the friendly attitude dispelled any misgivings Mike might have had about going with a stranger. He probably never realized until too late that he was riding in the shadow of death. But sometime that evening, Mike Merrick traded his life for a newspaper headline. As Denny and Jerry got the papers ready for Jerry's afternoon delivery, they only casually noticed the two boys that raced by in the afternoon traffic. And they didn't pay much attention to the car that drew up shortly afterwards until the man called them over. Had two boys been by on bicycles? The boys nodded they had. Could they recognize them if they saw them again? Well, Denny guessed he could. Then hop in, the man said. Those are stolen bikes. Without giving it another thought, Denny got in and the car sped away. Jerry watched. He'd been told many times, if a friend got in a car with a stranger to write down the license number. It didn't seem to apply, but, well, fortunately, he marked it down. When he delivered a paper to Denny's house, he asked his mother if they'd caught the boys that had stolen the bicycles. Denny hadn't returned, so he told her the story and gave her the paper with the license number. Being a careful parent, she decided to call the police. Jerry supplied the necessary information and the stranger's car was quickly spotted. It was a good example of how important it is to always get the license number and description of any stranger who takes a young person off alone, no matter what they tell you. Public restrooms can often be a hangout for the homosexual. Bobby and his friends hadn't noticed the man who had been in the restroom when they changed, and as it was lady suggested, they take the shortcut under the pier, but the others preferred to take the more traveled way home. When Bobby recognized the stranger as the man in the restroom, the shortcut under the pier didn't seem like a good idea at all. After all, it's more fun to stay with your friends anyway. Bobby had made a wise decision. It may have saved his life. The decision is always yours, and your whole future may depend on making the right one. So no matter where you meet a stranger, be careful if they are too friendly, if they try to win your confidence too quickly, and if they become overly personal. One never knows when the homosexual is about. He may appear normal, and it may be too late when you discover he is mentally ill. So keep with your group, and don't go off alone with strangers unless you have the permission of your parent or teacher.